In today's video, I'm going to talk about why SLS 3D printing may just be the future of 3D printing technologies, but I'm also going to crush a few hopes and dreams in the process. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus from Makers Muse. So as most of you will know, with 3D printing, it's more of an umbrella term for a huge range of different technologies. Most people are familiar with FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, which is the technology that most cheap or low-end desktop 3D printers utilize. But there are other technologies that are now becoming popular in the desktop 3D printing space, such as DLP and SLA, which are liquid resin-based technologies. But what about SLS? Well, SLS stands for Selective Laser Sintering and is a powder-based 3D printing process. It's been around for quite some time, like most of the other 3D printing processes, but the key is in 2014 when a whole suite of core patents for SLS ran out, allowing other companies to start making the technology and therefore dropping the price. So in this video, I wanna talk about two such companies, Formlabs and Sinterit, and I've got a whole nice box of goodies here. Uh, full of stuff that they've sent me, as well as some examples of more higher-end commercial SLS systems. I want to talk about the quality, what you can expect out of these machines, and also what you might need to know if you want to end up owning one. So, let's get into it. These are example models from Sintrit, a company based in Poland. And the Sintrit is a desktop SLS machine. They sent me uh, this incredible cube. Um, they sent this insane part-in-part -part, um, wheel assembly. But what are the advantages of SLS 3D printing? Well, it has a few key advantages over regular desktop FDM, one of which being you don't need support material. Being a powder system, the powder that isn't sintered, selective laser sintering, actually acts as a support for the part as it's formed in the build chamber from the bottom to the top. The platform actually starts here and drops down, and you end up with a whole, whole chamber of powder with sintered parts inside. This also means you can have many parts in the same build using a technique called 3D nesting or 3D patterning, whichever, whoever you talk to. Which means you can have heaps of different parts in the same chamber, in the same build, they're not touching and they have no support material. You simply remove them at the end, dust off the loose powder you didn't sinter and you have the final parts. There's no post-processing needed. However, you can do things to improve the part finish and one such thing is sandblasting. So the Lisa, the Sinterit team with the Sinterit Lisa did sandblast these parts which has given them a nicer sort of finish over what you'd get raw off the actual machine. Another company that's pushing an affordable SLS machine is Formlabs with the Fuse 1, which is not currently available yet, but you can pre-order it if you want to. And I reached out to Formlabs and asked if they could print a demo file for me, and they were kind enough to do that. So I got this little rabbit printed on the Formlabs Fuse 1. It's uh, just the standard of Stanford Bunny. I've hollowed it out and done a lattice infill inside it. So in this video, I want to go through and compare both the Formlabs Form 1 and the Sinterit Lisa, as well as compare it to some commercial SLS prints like I have here, which I received through Shapeways. These would have no doubt been printed on an EOS system, the original company to produce SLS technology, and an EOS SLS system cost well in excess of a few hundred thousand dollars. So I'm gonna compare the quality here and I'm gonna go through some advantages and disadvantages of the different technologies. Firstly, let's start with some numbers. Everyone cares how much things cost. So the Sintrit is priced at $6,990 US and the Fuse One is priced at $9,990. There is a bit of a price jump there, and that is the raw machine. To get anything else, such as the finishing stations, it will increase the cost. Now the machines do have differing build volumes. You have the Sintrit with a 150 by 200 by 150 millimeter build volume and the Fuse One with a 165 by 165 by 320 millimeter build volume. It's important to note that with SLS technology, you don't have to go to that full height with powder. You can just go to the height of your part, but you must go to the extents of the X and Y. You can't just do a bit here. You have to do that whole X and Y up to the certain height that you have set for Z. And that's important when it comes to your materials costs. Now materials costs for the, uh, the Sintrit is priced at around 110 euros per kilo. Um, or $270 per two kilos 
of powder on their website and that may change. And the Fuse one, the prices aren't released yet, but expect it to be around the same. It's about an estimate to be about $100 US a kilogram. And what sort of powder you might be asking is it? Well, it's actually a nylon powder. So the sintering system sinters nylon powder together to form your parts, which means the parts are quite stable at high temperatures and they're very strong. I know the Formlabs team were producing bicycle uh, foot pedals and using them, one of their team was actually using them on their bicycle. The parts produced by SLS are very tough. They're not going to be as strong as a melted nylon, nowhere close, but it's a sintered nylon and it is quite tough as well as being quite resilient to higher temperatures than you'd expect out of like a PLA FDM part. Now I have some of these parts in front of me. Like I said, I have this, uh, this array of fasteners from a uh, EOS machine printed from Shapeways and I have like this cube from Sinterit. They even put Maker's Muse on it, that's nice. And I have this bunny from Form Labs. So looking at these parts together, I'm not sure of the layer heights that were used, but keep in mind that this cube was sandblasted, so the finish is going to be different to the Form Labs print. But looking at the Form Labs one, it's hard to see if there's any real difference between the two. These two are pretty much identical in quality that I can see. And with the EOS print from Shapeways, it's pretty much flawless as you'd expect from a multi hundred thousand dollar system. But you might be asking yourself, why are the parts different colors? Why are the, the, the parts on the lower cost SLS systems black while these ones are white? Well, I haven't been given a definitive answer, but I'm pretty sure it's down to the laser power used. Let me explain how SLS actually works. These machines have to warm up. They warm up the print chamber or the build chamber to pretty much just below the, the point where the material can be sintered. So this can take upwards of an hour depending on how large the chamber is. And the laser system, which in the case of the form lab system is only 10 watts in power, just tips the powder over the edge. And it's really important to minimize the amount of energy going into that powder because of shrinkage. So let's use that to segue into the disadvantages of SLS technology, shrinkage. So, has someone who's worked on SLS builds before, shrinkage is a major issue with even the most expensive SLS systems, and that's because the nylon powder, after the build is complete, shrinks on itself. And you think, okay, I'm used to shrinkage with, with ABS printing, fine, I understand. It's not that simple. Shrinkage on SLS systems is non-uniform. You have X and Y shrinkage, and then you have Z shrinkage, and it's a different percentage. So hopefully, depending on the software that is brought out with the Sintret and Fuse One, it compensates for that, but there'd definitely be a bit of dialing in for that shrinkage. Different parts will shrink different amounts, depending on how thick the walls are, how complex they are, and how long the build takes. Also, how long it takes to cool the parts down is really important. I know with EOS systems, the whole build chamber does warm up, but you need to let it cool down slowly. Think about how you, you, know, you temper materials. You need to let the whole thing cool down slowly and uniformly, sometimes in excess of 24 hours in those bigger build chambers to make sure your parts don't just go bang and completely skew out of shape. Another aspect of SLS printing is this. You can actually dye it. Nylon takes dyes really readily. These are industrially dyed through Shapeways and they look fantastic but you can actually get stuff dyed using Rit dye. And a lot of artists actually take the very nice pure white powder from the EOS systems and dye them like with tie dye to create necklaces and all sorts of things. These lower cost systems are black, so you can't dye them again. I believe they're black because you need to use a less powerful laser source to sinter it at, the, at a given temperature. But it doesn't stop the fact that nylon is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture. It absorbs moisture really quickly. If you've been FDF, FDM printing with nylon, you know it absorbs moisture almost instantly. And because you can dye it, it's absorbing moisture. Not only because it's nylon, but also because it's sintered. It's not completely melted. The nylon actually can have stuff wick into it. And to show what kind of effect this can have, this is some nylon that's been rarely touched. And I have this guy. So this is... Uh, <laughs> So this is called Mr. Clicky, and he's a design I came up with in third year uni, and he's been handled by children and people and workshops all around, all around Australia. Have a look at the difference in color. That's what nylon becomes 
um, SLS nylon becomes after it's been handled. It absorbs the, the, you know, the grease from your fingers, it absorbs dirt. It's got a bit of red on the back of his head because it touched something at some point. It gets this nasty kind of yellowy color and the sunlight especially, UV will start to make, turn it yellow. So this is pretty much pure off the machine and this is after being exposed to the elements and people over, over a period of time. And now we need to move on to the bit that these manufacturers don't want you to know and that is the percentage of powder you can reuse. You might have thought that the powder in these build chambers that isn't sintered can be reused again and again and again. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Nylon in SLS systems gets damaged every time you run the machine. It's heated up, again, just below the sintering point and then cooled down again. And this makes the powder kind of fluffy, for lack of a better word. If you run a system, an SLS system, with high, high percentage of reused powder, your parts start to lose definition. They get squishy and soft on the outside because it's got all these loose, larger granules of powder that are kind of sticking together as they've been damaged from previous runs of the machine. So you need to substitute powder you've used with virgin powder. Now, both companies I've talked to recommend about a 50% reuse for a good definition parts, but if you dig through the manuals, they say you can reuse up to 70% if you're willing to put up with a bit of quality loss. Now I'm sure you could go higher. I know some companies can substitute up to 80 or even 90% reused powder, but you're really rolling the dice. You're gonna get some really fluffy parts and they're not gonna have the definition that this sort of thing has. I remember when I first got my first prints from Shapeways, they were using stupidly high recycle rates and they were terrible quality. You could dig your fingernail into them and it'll just squish right in. Um, you can guarantee that this part has a very low recycle percentage. In fact, it might actually be pure virgin powder. And that leads me on to the next point. To run these machines, you need to have a pretty much full build chamber. It's called 3D nesting, I mentioned it at the start of the video, and that's why SLS systems are fantastic for high volume print bureaus and probably terrible to own at home because you're not gonna be able to print one thing. You're gonna to wanna to print a lot of them all at once in your build chamber. Like I mentioned, you can stop it at the Z height, but your X and Y needs to be used. So going back to the specs of both machines, you're looking at a 165 by 165, roughly that X and Y. You're not gonna just do one small thing on the form, on the Fuse 1. You're going to wanna do, you know, 20 of them, which you can do, no problem at all. But you need to keep that in mind. This technology is not going to be very useful for an individual at home. And let's go to our last point, the post-processing. So as you can imagine, you have all this loose powder and you've got, you have to pull these parts out of the loose powder. Yes, it is as messy as you can imagine. In the videos, you, you can see how they pull it out and dust it off and you know use an air blower to clean it off and then they use a sandblaster to make the parts look fantastic. In an industrial circumstance, it's fine. You can deal with that powder. In a home environment like where I am here, no chance, it's going to be extremely messy, the powder gets everywhere, and you need to make sure you have breathing safety, uh, safety devices like a mask, because the powder is so fine, you can breathe it in, and breathing in plastic powder probably isn't the best for you. So that's gonna do it for this video on SLS Technologies in 2017. Both Sinterit and Formlabs have very promising machines to bring the technologies of SLS down in price by a massive amount, to put it in reach of smaller companies. But as an individual, I really would think twice before ordering a powder-based system. You might not know what you're getting into. And yes, these parts produce fantastic detail. Actually, Sinterit produced my tolerance uh, printing test and everything moves, even the 0 0.05. It's actually quite incredible. And just check out this book that Sinterit sent. The minimal wall thickness is 0.075 or so millimeters and it basically is flexible like a piece of paper. But you really need to keep in mind the disadvantages that I've mentioned. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video on SLS 3D printing useful. Hit that like and subscribe if you did. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.